right, guys, this is the BL-10 bar lock. It, straight from Japan, uh, D. Miser sent it with a note that said, please analyze this lock. And to me, I choose to interpret that to mean you can destroy it. You don't have to return it. So I thought we would try to attack this together. It is a very cool looking lock. It weighs four and a half pounds, uh, about two kilos. And D. Miser said that uh, the uh, insurance companies require them to replace these locks every year with the idea they can incorporate the latest technologies and probably a good way to sell locks too. Anyway, BL10, this is what the key looks like. It is a nine wafer or a nine pin or nine wafer lock, wafer lock, <laughs> double wafer. Uh, it's kind of cool though because no matter which way you turn it, you can get into the lock. If you turn it counterclockwise, one side comes undone. And if you turn it clockwise, uh, the other side comes undone. I, in looking at this lock, uh, what I've discovered, let me put a light down there for you, there is a locking paw located right there in the very top. And if I can get the light on there, when you lock it, you can see it pop up and down. That is spring-loaded, but only if you push in from the front. It can't compress up into the lock. It can only be pushed forward. So I see that as a potential exploit. Um, before we think about exploiting it, let me talk about my experiences in picking this lock. I spent about two and a half hours trying to pick this lock, and uh, what I can tell you is, first of all, the core is not is free floating; it's non-tension. Let me put the screwdriver in there, and it just freely rotates. So, as a consequence of that, you can't tension any of those wafers; they're free floating. Um, and the way I view it is, when you put the key in, it positions those wafers, and then then you'll be able to turn it. If you begin turning the core without them being in alignment, you won't be able to get into the lock. I Believe me, I've tried hundreds and hundreds of times. There's absolutely no feedback from the lock whatsoever, and I just can't imagine you'd be lucky enough to rake all nine of those wafers into the right position. The other thing that it appears is that the, the key is double-sided, but I believe that it probably sets some of the wafers on the top and some of them on the bottom before you rotate it. They're not all tensioned, I don't believe, on one side. Hence the another reason to have a double-sided key. So picking it is not going to be an option. The BL-10 is being a little bit resistant to the Lock Lab's um, persuasive efforts here. So what I'm going to try to do now is probably sh let first attack. Uh, the idea is we can work on this together. If you've got any ideas, I'm all ears, but I'm going to begin by trying to shim it first. I'm now, obviously, if you look closely, I can't get a shim up in there because there's this uh, shackle material uh, is hanging over it to protect it. I believe that that is only plastic, so perhaps we can take a knife and cut the plastic off, and then perhaps we can get a shim in there. I just don't know how long that will take, so I'm going to probably go off camera and cut it off and then be right back. All right, there we go. I got that sheath cut off. It only took about 30 seconds. It really was pretty light, but not a big deal. We, most of this shackle is still metal, but on the top here, I have a piece of uh, 18 thousandths shimming material that I cut into a point. I'm just going to try to drive it right in there, and hopefully we can knock that pin and cause it to fold up. So I'm just going to shove it right there and just beat on it with my pair of pliers. Drive it in, hopefully. And I can feel it, I can feel it going in very slowly, I'm trying not to bend anything. Not the best tool for this, but... All right, now it's gone in very deeply. Now let's see if we can open the lock, nothing to it. All right, so at least this lock, it is shimmable, but... Why stop there, guys? Let's see if this lock has any other weaknesses that we ought to know about. Um, I did beat on this with some aluminum, trying to beat it out. I just gave it a couple of whacks, and that appears to be soft metal on the top of that hinge there. If there's nothing in there except maybe a C-clip or a Sir-clip holding it in place, maybe we can beat that out. So let me lock this back up, and now let's try attack number two going against one of these hinge pins. Okay, I've got it clamped up on a concrete floor. I had a steel bolt holding some vice grips. I'm going to go after a fresh one, and I've put it in this vise so that the bottom one's free-floating. So hopefully I can just drive it right through, and that link will break. So I have a very hefty sledge. So let's give it a couple of whacks and see what happens here.
All right, guys, I don't think that's going to work. It doesn't look like there's any give at all. So what I'm going to do now, oops, what I'm going to do now, this, this protective cap has been crushed. I'm going to go ahead and pry it off and see what's under it. Maybe there's a quicker way to get in here, like removing a screw. All right, looks like that's a no-go. It looks like what they've done is after they slid the pin through, they put a washer on top a hard washer and then they spot welded it in place. This little cap, this was apparently just a, an aesthetic or maybe a dust cap, but we're not going to be driving this through that hole. So let's try to find something else. Instead, why don't we look at this plastic. This looks like solid uh, metal, but everybody cuts manufacturing corners. Let me cut this metal off of here, or this uh, plastic off of here. Maybe there's a weak point on these little sections that we can attack and break one of these bars. All right, doesn't look like it. This looks like a solid steel bar. So let's see if I can cut it with a hacksaw. Maybe it's not hardened all the way through. That's a no-go. Let me see if I can, maybe it's case hardened, it's softer underneath. I'm gonna to try to cut through the casing to get at the soft inner core if there is one. Okay, I'm just going to cut through the outer casing if it's case hardened and then I'm going to hit it with a hacksaw when I'm a little bit way through it just to see if it's soft on the inside. Alright, it does appear to be case hardened, however the case hardening is fairly deep. You can see with uh, 10 or 12 licks with a hacksaw I started cutting into it, but that outer shell, the case hardening itself, is what's going to dull our hacksaw blade. So while we could do it this way, we're going to have to carry that heavy grinder and power source and our hacksaws. Not going to be a surreptitious entry. Alright, so let's give up there. Those are pretty tough. That's not a reasonable way. Let's now take a look at the lock itself. I kind of wonder what's underneath this plastic housing. I'm going to cut that off and uh, we'll see if we can attack it that way. Okay, I have cut the end cap off. Uh, just a thin shell of plastic went very quickly and exposed the bottom. It is a solid steel insert into the bottom of this. It looks like it's uh, welded in as part of the outer shell casing. So this is not going to be a quick way in. Let me go ahead and remove the rest of this case and we'll get a little bit closer look. All right, beneath that plastic housing is a solid steel. It's folded and by the way the metal is also hardened and it's also spot welded in different places to make sure that you can't punch from the front and push the lock out. Everything in the back is spot welded and besides you got that shackle in there and the shackle will prevent it from this quarter inch of steel on both sides you're not going to be shoving that stuff out that uh, thin plastic bottom. You know, a lot of thought and material went into this. A lot of great design work went into designing this lock, I'm sure. But it does have that one glaring weakness, and that is we can shim it with a piece of 18,000 shim. And you got to ask yourself, these guys knew what they were doing when they built this. Why did they do that? And the reason that they designed that in and made it so easy is because they wanted to give the customers the convenience of being able to lock their motorcycle up without having to go to the trouble of putting the key in and figuring out which way to turn it. And so they put in a spring-loaded locking paw, which is the entire weakness of this lock. So they've compromised the security by trying to accommodate customer convenience. All too common. 
So anyway, fellas, I appreciate your time. Uh, D Miser, I appreciate you sending this lock all the way from Japan. I'm sorry we had to break it. I will keep the comments open. Uh, if you guys got any more ideas about different ways to compromise this, uh, please let me know. I'm sure I missed, you know, 10 or 12, but uh, let me know what you think. Stay safe, guys. Stay legal.